Yes. Like that. Let's get in there. And all I want to feel on the downswing is I'm splashing, almost like feeling like splashing water. If you can get it moving one way, and it just makes the game so much easier. So. Well, good morning, another day, another dollar. Today, I want to take you through the whole practice day. Finishing with um, going into detail about what I learned yesterday in my lesson. So this should be quite insightful today. Be showing putting drills, chipping stuff, long game, and then playing some holes. I'm doing it solo today so I can really focus. How's it going? We're doing young. Not bad, mate. Not bad. In the road. Sweet. Have a good day. Right then, my buddies. Let's see if we uh, see if we got that little fade in the bag after yesterday's lesson. Right, splash the water. Bit of Picasso. You know what I mean? Not the best of swings, but it's not a bad result. That. Right, like I said, today's a solo practice day. I'm out on the golf course now, playing some holes, and I'm going to talk about um, some of the swing stuff that I did yesterday. Um, sort of explain that because I didn't capture all of the lesson yesterday so I want to really like get into exactly what we did and explain how I'm taking it to the golf course but before that this morning looked like a pretty standard practice day so I started off with and I generally always do this I'll start off with doing a short climb on the putting green some golf clubs absolutely love this when you just like drawing blue lines all over the green doesn't go down well with the uh, with some of the older members. But I'll start with that, probably spend like 20 minutes just going down the line, hitting putts from different distances on that line, just getting the alignment right and getting the start line correct. And then I'll move on to lag putting, and I do this one drill with lag putting that Ryan Fricker showed me a few years back. It's where you step three paces, put a tee down, and then you put a tee for each further pace. So it starts with nine foot then 12 foot 15 foot 18 foot and i usually do four t sections you get two balls you stick an alignment rod or t's or whatever three foot behind the hole you take two balls and you've got to get both of them either in the hole or past the cup but short of the three foot stick or t's starting on nine get two past go back, get two past, go back, get two past. And today started with an uphill one, which is a lot easier, and then went on to the downhill version of that, which is obviously a lot harder, and it took me like 40 minutes. So putting practice sort of overspilled a bit today, but that's not the end of the world. Downwind uphill 106 pin. Pretty soft, that it? One more really good drill that I heard the other day on Carl Morris's Brain Booster. Brain Booster. One good drill that Carl spoke about was something that's way more friendly if you're getting warmed up for like your midweek medal or your Saturday club comp or your club champs, whatever, or just going out to play a friendly game. All you need is two balls and a putting green in your putter. And you just put the ball down, put the first one down, and just putt without trying to go to any specific target or trying to hit it any specific length. And then with the second ball, you're trying to roll the second ball up to the first ball as close as possible. And you just do this with varying distances. And once you can get the second ball, just rolling up to the first ball so it barely touches it, your uh, touch is gonna be a really good place. So there's another quite good drill that isn't, you know, putting timber down all over the putting green and getting the old boys out there. Yeah, you're making holes in the putting green. It's probably about two, 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 uphill downwind. We're playing 215, got the five iron on. Bit of a pull, start line's better. Getting a predictable sort of pattern now. And like I said, I'm, I'm gonna really delve into the, the swing stuff towards the end of this video, but it's either starting left to target and staying there, or I'm getting a few starting left that are cutting on. And if you can get consistent sort of like start lines and trajectory, if you can get it moving one way, and it just makes the game so much easier. It's good so far, just need to work a bit more on 
the, the paintbrush section of that because I'm not used to being in the right spot, but we'll get to that. So I'm gonna discuss the first part um, of what we went over yesterday, what I went over with Doug. What was happening before I went and saw him? I was feeling a bit out of sync, a bit stuck, which is like a massive tendency. I think someone commented that. Oh, you're stuck, are you? That's a first. It's always a tendency of mine to get a bit stuck, the hips out, outrun everything else, and then I get in a position where I either stop and turn it, or I just flat out block it. And my swing was in a position where I wasn't actually comfortable hitting fades, which I've learned is not a very good position for me to be in. Last year, when I was getting into a nice swing of it out here, I was hitting a cut. All the stuff we were working towards was um, sort of like fade pattern, and it just felt way controllable just knowing that I could start it down the left and it's pretty much not going to turn left. I was just going to get it floating off the left side and uh, hit nice controllable cuts. So with the first move, we're trying, it's, it's to encourage getting the club out more in front because I was getting here where the hands were getting out here and the club was getting behind and that's just not a good position. So he just gave me this really simple feel where I get to the top and all I want to feel on the downswing is I'm splashing almost like feeling like splashing water just in front of the hip in this position. So splash water. And what that does, if you take it to the top, and instead of going this way, I get that splash fill and it just gets the club out in front of me. And it's not like a conscious thought then, it's just a feeling which is great. And he always gives me these really easy feelings. And that's why every time I go there, I feel really confident because it's just such a simple feeling to then take to the golf course. Obviously it's pretty fresh. So I'm just getting used to it, but that's the first thing. Now get into the next thing as we go through this round. Oh yes. Oh, that's delightful. He's at the 30 yard pull jump. So after being in a stuck position for a while, I'm used to having to sort of wait for it. And then my hands get, have been getting a bit active. So that one there is where the hands get active and I get in actually a quite a good spot on the way down. Hitting straight pulls at the moment, bear in mind we've got a few days till Q school, is not like the worst feeling for me. If I'm getting stuck in hitting that block, I'm gonna hate it. But this, for the time being, while I'm working on face related to new position, is, uh, is fine. Let's see if we can actually put this together. Hey, there's the slider. That's the one there. Kill them, look. Chilling, there's one if you asleep. More on that. Q School is coming up next week. In fact, it's not that long. It's now Friday and uh, Q School is Monday. So as much as I um, sort of, you know, joke about and don't really act that serious, I actually, I really want to do well in this. And I sort of come out here and I was like, the, the only intention was to get ready for the season back at home, but yeah, I want to do well. So um, I'm working hard on my game and just trying to go in there with sort of like a good mindset. I've had the tournament like to get that out of the way and now feel starting to gain a bit of confidence out here. So I'm going to be vlogging all next week. And, and in fact, I'm probably just going to keep vlogging like this. I think this is what most people watch my channel for, is just to follow the pro stuff. I'm probably one of the only people actually doing it. And when I do it like this, all I got is a GoPro. I just literally take it with me and pick it up. And that way I can just keep pumping them out. And um, I think I'm going to continue with that. Obviously, a few course vlogs every now and again, chucked in, proper ones. When there's a good guest like Steve or Flower or Leon, Conig or Tor Pro, whatever. Someone's excited. Right, splash, flick. Splash and a flick. Just exactly what's going on up there, I think. Or well, flicking a splash. Yes. Like that. Let's get in there. So the second feel that I got yesterday was about, it was like an impact feel almost to encourage that fade, which I need to which I need to feel because I'm getting the club out in front of me more. And if I don't, I'm gonna start getting them sort of starting left and maybe even worse, starting left and moving left. So we're giving this really simple feeling, 
which was at impact, you just want to feel like you're putting a lick of paint just like slightly across the ball. So if you're doing that, you wouldn't be going this way. You'd, you'd sort of be going, you would sort of be going here and then just flicking that lick of paint. And the feel I get is that the club head sort of then works up and this way. If you see Jack Nicholas from a golf club, obviously a notor notorious, probably not the right word. Jack Nicholas, notorious failure of the golf ball. He was like that. And it's that sort of, that's like sort of like the feeling I get from it. So it's take it to the top, splash the water, get the club in front, which gets the club in front, and then just put a lick of paint on it just across the ball. And it's the second bit that I'm just trying to get used to at the moment. The club's actually getting quite nicely in front of me. It's just putting that lick of paint is what's gonna get the ball moving left to right. So let's see if we can do it this time. There we go. About a three yard cut. Maybe too much splash in there. That'd be splashing the water out here. So the club's literally just going left. So you wanna, so I wanna feel like the club's splashing here, closer to my body. Add the flicker paint. Start lining curve, it should be there. Yeah, so obviously this is completely fresh for me at the moment. It's, I mean, it was yesterday. I'm just trying to really cement that feel. I'm probably gonna hit quite a few more balls, especially tomorrow and go out and play, hopefully in sort of like a semi-pressurized situation, so try and sort of match over the weekend. But if I get to Sunday and I'm not quite getting the desired ball flight from the field, I'll hit some balls on the range before I go out on Monday and just see, see where it's going with the feels I'm trying to implement and then sort of adjust my, adjust my shot pattern from there. But I'm hoping, give it a couple of days, I can sort of bed that in and get, as long as I get it starting left to target and moving towards target, that's what I'm happy with. Oh my God, I've just actually, I've literally just hit such a nice golf shot there. I've got the feel. So it's not splashing. That tee shot, the second one was splashing too far out here. He said splash down by your side and then flick the paint. Oh yes. This is a great hole to test the swing. Can't miss it left, water all up the left. So we're going to start it down the left side. Just take those same fills, splash down by the side. Paintbrush. Try and get us moving back, sort of like off the edge of the hazard. Oh shit. Um, <clears throat> just a bit of a left miss there. Oh, if you heal it, it's going to cut, isn't it? Confidence building. Just an absolute confidence booster, that drive. Start it down the left side, pull it, and turn it over. Beautiful. I think, I think what I'm going to do is get off the golf course and go to the range and just smash a load of balls and try and um, just really implement this feel today. I think that is priority. Um, it is 4.19. need to get in the gym as well. So in fact, I'm just going to do it now. Right, straight to the range. Let's try and work this out. <laughs> 